Welcome back to another video. Uh, this was a really fun, special time on an outdoor rink. Uh, my son went with me. I've done other videos from this place uh, like a year ago, basically, last winter. And I uh, expect to be back out there at least a couple more times this winter. Gear for this week, I went old school vintage leather uh, fiberglass mask for most of the game. I did switch that out with a uh, vintage combo as well. And so figured I'd give you a rundown here of the gear real quick and then we'll go right into the game. Just one more quick thing while I'm sitting here editing this video. I just wanted to give a mention that a couple weeks ago I did a YouTube interview uh, with Mary Gettens and her YouTuber Ask segment on her YouTube channel. Um, I had a great conversation with her. So if you're interested in maybe knowing a little more of my background and a little bit more about how I got involved with the gear, all that kind of stuff, um, I'm gonna put the link for that interview in the description of this video. Um, and while you're there, she's done some amazing interviews. So maybe give her channel a subscribe and uh, leave some comments on some of our videos. They're pretty awesome. So we'll get this started by talking about the mask and the combo I switched to. Uh, mask, I've already done a video on this recently. This is uh, the one I just picked up. It was made by Brian D. Clark up in Winnipeg area. And it's a uh, fiberglass and Kevlar across the beak, vintage style mask. This is the first time I took it out for actual play on the ice. Uh, the last video was related to just playing some street hockey, basically. And I noticed this time wearing it, this, the protrusion here, this corner, causes a little bit of a problem. Um, when you tip, you're looking down, it likes to kind of touch into the chest protector. So I did have some struggles with that, having to reposition during the game. At about halfway, um, Actually kind of funny, I had to stop to adjust my toe straps and that caused kind of a break into play about half time type of thing or end of the first period. So we went inside and I grabbed my backup I brought with me, which is a late 70s Cooper SK600 black that I have re-padded with the original style shape padding. Um, this was before they came out with the like uh, egg shell or egg, egg carton type foam style. Um, and I put a, a mid seventies HM 200 goalie cage on there and a TP dangler. I had a different cage on this. It was kind of a last minute thing that I decided to take it with me. So when I took the cage off, I left the J hooks that are on there, they're black J hooks. Uh, and because it stopped the cage from coming up into my chin, but it didn't fit proper with those J hooks, but you know, like I said, it was kind of a last minute decision to take that with me. Gloves for this game. First time I've taken this pair out on the ice. Uh, these are what I believe I can age these around rough 1988 ish uh, Vaughn leather gloves. These are still the original style of gloves. So they would be like the T1000 and B1000. The Trapper has black nylon so I think it makes it a little bit later than the uh, blocker because the blocker has the brown brown nylon and I'll talk about that in just a second but you've got your cheater that's attached and has like lace in in the middle here instead of it being a solid piece and you've got the uh, what, what commonly is referred to as the snuff can thumb protector there uh, it's an awesome glove it's very well broken and it's in great condition I really like this glove. It is a Vaughn Canada glove. So it was manufactured in Canada, I believe just outside of London, Ontario. Not much else I can say about that, except it's really a nice glove. Um, it fits the hand real snug. There's not a lot of wiggle room inside for your fingers. This is, this is uh, maybe a little bit earlier than that. I'm not 100% up to date on my Vaughn history but it is also a Vaughn Canada um, label on there. So this blocker, I got this from uh, Casey. Uh, and if actually uh, you should go to Instagram and follow his kids on Instagram. 
Um, I think it's Hockey Kids 97. I'll put a link in the description for that. Some amazing hockey players, uh, Max and Michaela. When I got the blocker, it had a really big split in the seam where the nylon is overlap sewed to the leather side wall. And there's a couple things about that. This brown nylon that Vaughn used, you just can't buy that anymore. Um, there's not an identical color of brown available anywhere. And I've had multiple people more knowledgeable than me look for it and tell me that as well. Originally, this was gonna go in for repair uh, to Glenn Miller, but I decided on a couple things. I found that there's been several other rep repairs on it and this nylon doesn't hold up well at the edges. So when the, when the stitching has you know ripped loose, the nylon is really frayed and it's a real loose nylon and it, it just continues to fray. So I removed all the uh, original thread off of there and then tied off the ends down inside of the glove here so it wouldn't keep pulling. Uh, and I used some thread and a needle and I did a spiral stitch and I used the same holes in the leather set, uh, side channel so that I wouldn't um, cause any damage to the leather. And I did a kind of a tuck and sew and sealed that whole split up. Uh, I did end up with a mistake. I have a little bit of a bunch over here in the leather that I, I guess when I was pulling it, I was pulling the nylon towards the fingertip area and caused it to uh, bunch up because there wasn't enough nylon left to match up with the leather. So it was a rush job. I did it at about one o'clock in the morning last night um, after realizing I had no clue what I was gonna wear out on the ice today. It fits great. It, I mean, blockers are blockers, they do their job, but when you can have a match set like this um, in any of the old brands, uh, it's pretty cool to wear them. So I took this opportunity and uh, did all right with the glove. I caught a couple pucks, I think. Um, so that was good. I did have some pop outs, but that happens to me no matter what I wear. Upper body, chest and arms, or belly and arms. Uh, I decided I would go with the Cooper Protect Doll. It's basically the evolution of the, the old two piece shoulder and arm and then belly pad, uh, except for the arms are attached to you know, the belly part of it, but the, the materials are about all the same. These do have a like spandex type cover over the arms and the pads. Uh, and it does tend to make your arms sweat quite a bit, actually. There's not a lot of protection on these. I've talked about it before, I believe. Uh, one thing about these is that it has a metal clip, a little spring latch clip here that attaches to a metal D-ring on the belly pad. Uh, that's, um, sometimes you don't want to get a puck to that. that, that can hurt. Um, this is a later version. Surprisingly, this, this particular design and model was sold for a very long time, all the way up into the nineties. And I'm almost positive that it even existed in the, uh, Bauer brand after the transition. I think they kept that going through the late nineties, even. Pants. So I need black pants for this one. Uh, preferably would have, would have liked to have had white with a red center stripe, but I don't have that and I didn't have time to make a center stripe. So black with white side stripe. These are old Cooper player pants. They are the two piece pant where you can unbutton the outside like pants part and um, pull the waist area and the, the thigh inserts out. Um, that's pretty cool because for somebody like me, sometimes I can find extra uh, leg sections or you know I guess the shell you call it and I can replace and swap them out with the belly parts that I have the waist parts nothing real special about these I did add a lot of extra foam in these a long time ago so there's like a two inch uh, open cell foam inside the legs as well as plastics pretty cool pants pr pretty basic original Cooper suspenders on these as well pretty stretched out um, and these also have the metal clamp style adjuster with the, all those little teeth on it. So you slide it up and clamp it down and it bites it in there and stops it from sliding around. Knee pads, like always when I go with leather, Cooper GP2s, vinyl and foam, uh, elastic around the uh, top and bottom. And these ones I have sewn and adjusted because the elastic was pretty stretched out. It still has a lot of stretch to it elasticity, uh, but these were super, super long. So 
I overlapped it and sewed it back and um, they fit me really well. I still run a, a strap of clear tape around them just because I'm always afraid that it's gonna pull loose and I'll have a knee pad issue. Uh, when you wear the old pads, it's not as easy to make an adjustment because you've got so many different straps. Whereas, you know, modern pads, you got a couple Velcros maybe and you can get at your knee. Anyway, GP2s. Pads for this game, leather, deer hair, K-Pac, Cooper GP59s. So these are um, the senior level pad, not the pro pad, which was the G GP95. Uh, but these are really very similar in construction. Um, this is a set I've had for a long time. Um, and when I got them, they were in pretty rough shape. I've done a ton of repairs to these, but I also made all new straps for these and new toe straps, uh, toe buckles, uh, new straps up here on the lower thigh that I, you know, have to sew them on the right way in the same way with the, uh, the old split strap that attaches on the outside in between the rolls. The heavy, I'm not sure what they weigh, but they felt really heavy by the time we were done after about an hour and 45 minutes. Excellent pads. These are uh, earlier ones, I believe 70s based on the, uh, late 70s based on the position of the, the tag and it doesn't have a big cooper on the side. Uh, some of the repairs I did on this particular pad, it's pretty noticeable. There was a big old hole in here, and it looks like I'm going to have to re-repair this now. Uh, but I made a patch for here, and I did a stitch around the perimeter um, to keep it closed up. There's even some leather glue, uh, and I did a like a pad underneath a piece of, uh, I think it was nylon or canvas. I put underneath that before I cut the patch and sewed it in. That's just some of it. There's several other little spots. It's just real hard to find because I'm that good. No, really. It's just hard to find because I can't remember. Excellent pads. If you don't have a set of GP59s or GP95s, I highly recommend you find yourself a set. Now for something cool and different and first time for me. Uh, Lang goalie skates. Lang goalers. Uh, these are the, they have like the hinged, um, ankle area here and original insert liners boot liners your whole your foot goes in that boot inside of here um these even have the original laces that are like a woven lace they're in fantastic amazing condition um had them on the wrong side there these were given to me as a gift from my buddy stuart stujo I really can't thank him enough for something like that got them all cleaned up and um, had my friend Steve actually sharpen them for me a few months ago. Uh, they felt like they were a little bit too sharp, especially the inside edge to me. So I did end up doling them off a little bit uh, so that I could move around without just falling over. But I, I did have a hard time. Now, the part I'm not sure about is maybe that's because I was on an outdoor rink. So that could have been, you know, softer ice or whatever. And maybe I was getting more bite because of that. So when I wear these out on the regular rink, I might be in for a surprise. I might have dulled them off too much. I don't know yet. Love these skates. Heavy as heck. Which, for somebody like me that doesn't skate very well, that's probably a good thing. It's a good uh, lower center there of, of uh, weight. They're also a bit taller. The blade is taller than my other skates, my CCMs. So that took a little bit of getting adjusted too. Wanted to wear a cool jersey out there for this one. So uh, this is a Blackhawks jersey that I, um, I didn't make, but I did the graphics on. I bought the blank jersey. Actually, I think I got it at like a used sporting goods store in Hamilton, Ontario, two years ago. Uh, anyway, I got that, uh, did up a graphic in heat press vinyl and put it on there. I didn't do the shoulders or anything, made it kind of generic and basic. The last piece, Northland Custom Pro, wood stick, straight blade. Got this just a few months ago in a local like um, Facebook Marketplace sale or something. Picked up a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. And this was the stick that was in good condition and usable. It is definitely uh, not your modern day, you know, foam core or composite stick. 
these are heavy pieces of lumber. So that's the gear. Um, hopefully, you know, you again got something out of this, enjoyed seeing the different gear that I wear from my collection. Uh, my son was skating out there. That's where there'll be some helmet camera footage from him. Anyway, if you like the video, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and you'll get alerts every time I upload a new video. Uh, be back out on the ice again here tomorrow and this will be back at the rink. So should have another video coming up soon after this one. Thanks. So out here in the uh, outdoor rink, wearing the new mask, wearing Vaughn gloves, wearing the laying skates today, first time. Not used to the edge on them, but uh, hopefully I get used to the edge on these skates. So gonna risk putting the camera behind the net um, and we'll see how this goes.
helped if I didn't pass it to him, right? Okay, well, switching out of the mask, go with the combo, SK600, HM200, TP Dangler. I didn't expect you to poke check that. Every time. It's like I can't even move past it. I was waiting for it that time. Oh. 